Okay. Thank you, Rod, for the introduction. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Roman Carriel. I, uh, I work um, at uh, AMD Research on programming models and especially uh, on SQL for various accelerators. And I'm also the Chronos SQL specification editor, and I'm also a member of the ISO C committee. So, um, today we, we have a, a huge problem uh, with. Um, uh, all the hardware uh, extraordinary uh, explosion of features and various accelerators, and you, you can add your own accelerator on, on the pictures. And of course, uh, uh, if you are in the HPC or um, data center world, uh, you need to scale that at uh, the at a thousand of nodes or things like that. And nowadays with the chiplet revolution, you have in the same package, a mix and match of various accelerators, such as obviously the APU with CPU and GPU is the same package, but you can have also uh, AI accelerators and things like that. And obviously you need to program that um, at the for the full system. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will be very uh, complex uh, to, to program. Uh, and if we need something, perhaps we can follow the, the team that sounds low, which is don't try to invent a new language, but just uh, uh, use an existing one if we want to, to have better chances to, to, uh, to have the language accepted on the long term. So why not C++? Because uh, as you might know, uh, it allows direct mapping to the hardware um, in most of the case with zero overhead abstraction. And if we look at modern C++, actually it's very similar to uh, Python, but obviously you have the, the performance uh, of C++ and it's quite simpler compared to all C or all C++. And, in C plus uh, C plus uh, you you have also the MD span, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, Fortran multidimensional arrays, and C plus plus twenty six. There will be Blast uh, library coming, so it's now a good choice for for HPC. But obviously, C plus plus does not come with heterogeneous computing support, so we need something, and that's why there is an um, consortium called Chronos. Uh, which is here to uh, connect uh, silicon to, to software. And they work on various standards. Uh, uh, so there are graphic standards that you, 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 you might know, uh, but there are also some compute standards. And obviously we are interested today in SQL. And the la latest version of SQL, SQL 2020, uh, was published um, in 2021, actually. And you can find some information about it. And an interesting part is that there are various uh, implementation available targeting a lot of uh, different kinds of, um, of hardware. Um, mostly uh, all the, the GPUs, uh, uh, from various member uh, vendors, but also some uh, vector processors uh, from NEC or uh, some hardware accelerators for AI. Okay, no question. Um, so you, you, you can find probably an implementation targeting your, your own hardware. If you look uh, more carefully uh, at what is concretely a SQL, uh, it's modern C++ with uh, heterogeneous simplicity. So uh, you have the concept of buffer that represents some abstract storage, which can live anywhere on the host, on some device uh, memory. And you have obviously the important part, which are the, the kernels, which is a code which will be accelerated on some uh, uh, device, accelerating device. And the interesting part here is that uh, it is single source, uh, like in OpenMP or CUDA or HIP or whatever. And the interesting part is that uh, it's type safe uh, by construction in the sense that uh, if you have some code, you do not have to to specify uh, the, the types to, to match the host code. So it's uh, uh, really uh, uh, 
uh, seamless integration in, in the host code and you have it provides you asynchronous execution in the sense that you will be able to launch, for example, this code uh, uh, with n instance with a parallel for um, construction. Um, and it will be launched and you, you, you will be able to use the result later. And this is specified uh, through the concept of accessor where you express the access intention you have on your data. So from this information, you will have an implicit data flow graph in the stand, for example, A here. A uh, used here is actually an accessor on our buffer here, which is the abstract storage. And we specify that uh, this access to buff will be write only, and we do not want to uh, waste time to initialize the memory because we know that we will write here all the elements. And so this is launched asynchronously. Um, in the future, for example, here we use uh, our buffer through another accessor, which is the host accessor to access the data uh, on the host side. And then we can iterate on all the elements of A and print uh, the, the value, for example. And wh what is interesting in, the, in SQL is that it provides you um, uh, automatic data transfer uh, across devices. So you, you do not have here to specify that you want to copy data from device to host and, and so on. And automatically the, the runtime can overlap for your computation um, and communication, which is often the, the, the difficulty uh, with some languages such as CUDA, for example. And you, you can have different hardware so this is specified through the concept of queue uh, that allows you to submit some common groups uh, with a submit um, uh, instruction. And the common group is the association typically of uh, a, some kernel launch plus some data access through accessor construction. So with that, you can construct very uh, complex um, uh, application. Uh, if you come from the um, uh, CUDA world, you, you have this uh, concept of uh, unified shared memory, which is closer to what you have in CUDA. So here on the left, you have the, what I've presented with this concept of buffers and accessors. On the right, you will have uh, USM uh, uh, access, uh, uh, USM concept, where uh, now you don't have buffers, but you have explicit allocated memory. For example, here we allocate uh, um, n uh, integers, uh, which will be shared between the host and the device uh, associated to the queue, which is a default uh, uh, device. And then you can uh, also launch some parallel for directly uh, uh, on the queue. And since there is no accessor to, uh, to explain to the runtime or the data dependencies, then you, you need you are on your own and you need to wait explicitly to uh, for the kernel completion uh, uh, before using the result uh, if you do not want to have a race condition. And once I've waited, I can use directly uh, my uh, data without an accessor on uh, on the host. And uh, we see since you are in in control, you, you need to freeze the memory, otherwise you will have the memory leaks. So it's more com somehow complex than the, the, the buffer accessors, but it's more compatible to, to CUDA. So it, it's a different mindset, but you, you can pick uh, one of each. And in some real case, you will have a lot of accessors. I, I don't want, I don't have time to enter into the detail, but you will have producer and, and consumer, and, so if you in initialize some matrix A and B, writing some buffers, and then you have matrix addition using uh, these buffers with some read accessor, and then you, you will write the, the result into C with the right accessor, then the runtime can automatically schedule everything for you. Uh, uh, so it uh, helps you overlapping everything. Uh, so 
kernel and computation without uh, managing basically a lot of events and multiple queues crew, or whatever. So it's uh, pretty cool. So there are a lot of uh, features available in SQL. You will see some of them uh, in this tutorial. Uh, um, um, but what is really powerful uh, in SQL is that you can really control any kind of hardware. For example, on my uh, work desktop, I have uh, CPUs uh, for my, my competitor. I have a GPU for my competitor. I have FPGA emulator. Uh, I have an AMD GPU and I have uh, an AMD FPGA. And I can program everything in this uh, single slide code uh, where I can uh, declare this run function uh, which is able to, to launch this kernel uh, on the, the various device. And you can write this run function yourself in pure SQL. So you will just uh, create your, your generic buffer. And then the run is just uh, a function taking a device name and some work to, to dispatch uh, on the device. And you create here a queue um, to um, uh, to some device and the device is just uh, the, the device uh, with uh, the, the name that, that you, you have used. I don't have time to enter into the details, but then you, you submit on this queue an accessor uh, uh, and then the, the parallel for of the work you have passed in parameters that will work on, on your device. So uh, it's pretty, pretty neat and uh, there is no super complex C++, it's just modern C++, and there is no, not a lot of boilerplate, but you, you can really use different accelerators from different vendors in the same program. And so that's really uh, inclusive. Uh, and you, you can do that because of the concept of backend. So the SQL runtime behind the scene can address various backends. And through all these backends, you, you can address the various uh, accelerators from various vendors, or even just CPUs if you do not have accelerator and you don't, or if you want to use your, your CPU. Or typically, when you want to, to develop your, your program, debug it, it's uh, usually quite simpler on, on the CPU because you, you have quite more uh, uh, accessible uh, debugging, uh, debugging tools. Uh, and another unique feature uh, coming with this backend is the interoperability, which means that when you are porting existing code, you can already, uh, uh, you, you, you have some code already based on, on, on some CUDA or OpenMP or whatever. And then you want to just to change some part of the application to use sticker, or you could also incorporate uh, some, uh, Backend modules in a SQL application, for example, to use some very optimized libraries written in CUDA or HIP or OpenMP or whatever. And then with this interoperability feature, you can really connect everything without uh, any loss of performance. I don't have time to, to dive into it, but uh, I will provide the uh, slides uh, later. Um, even if there are many uh, SQL implementation, uh, I would say that there are three main implementation if you want to play with, so compute PPP, HIPSQL, um, uh, GPC++, uh, from um, Intel, one API. So the all, oldest one is compute PPP. Actually, it was uh, demoed at uh, supercomputing in 2014 on the AMD booth quite long time ago. Uh, it looks like now they are more uh, targeting embedded world uh, such as uh, automotive. Uh, but it works on a lot of different platforms. HipSQL started as a, a hip based implementation, but uh, this German uh, implementation is now targeting a lot of various uh, uh, architectures. So you, you can try this one too. And the last one is the One API DPC++ uh, led by Intel. Uh, their goal is to uh, uh, upstream their implementation into a uh, uh, the Clang LLVM, so it's a work in progress and it can target a lot of various. Uh, so. Obviously, if you want to uh, develop the ecosystem, um, you need a lot of libraries uh, for, for uh, 
basic uh, uh, function. For, for, for example, obviously the BLAST, in the HPC world, but also uh, for machine learning. And that's the work that uh, Codeplay started a uh, few years ago. Uh, and Intel added also the one API uh, effort to, which is kind of equivalent to the uh, NVIDIA CUDA ecosystem. And uh, so the, the idea is to provide uh, uh, libraries for various uh, accelerators, uh, not only Intel actually. Um, and now uh, it's more independent from Intel and Rod uh, Byrne uh, is actually the, the chair of um, one API. Uh, so just to give you an idea, uh, you have a lot of libraries in uh, one API. Uh, uh, in the HPC world, you would might be uh, interested by one MQL, for example. And obviously, there is DPC++, the, the SQL compiler, which is at the center of uh, one API. And obviously, there is this elephant in the room that, hey, you have some good code and you, you, you might want to, to port it to, to, to SQL. Um, and that's a long story. That's why uh, USM has, uh, has been added to, uh, uh, to SQL to, to help uh, porting uh, CUDA code uh, with this kind of lower level uh, programming model. Uh, there was uh, already uh, all tools, um, Recyclator, Recyclator, I don't know how to pronounce it, which was an Eclipse uh, plugin to port the code. And uh, now they have an even more modern tools and more uh, uh, performance, which is diplomatic uh, from uh, one API. And you, you can try it. It looks like it works uh, quite well. I think. And if you are not happy uh, on your own computer, you might look at uh, some SQL extensions to really dive into some performance for, for your hardware. For example, if you are using some very specific uh, um, processor instructions, or if you are using FPGAs or some weird processor and memory device. And you might uh, be interested in the HPC world by the Celerity SQL implementation, which is a kind of big ass SQL on top of MPI plus SQL. So it's a quite interesting uh, concept. And outside of the uh, HPC uh, world, now we have uh, this uh, SQL for safety critical systems coming because obviously there are a lot of uh, use of uh, uh, high performance programming uh, in uh, embedded systems such as cars or uh, airplanes or whatever. That's uh, a work uh, that the Kronos uh, group is uh, doing uh, now. So to conclude, um, I, I think I've convinced you that SQL uh, is really the inclusive standard for accelerated computing with a uh, lot of uh, implementation with various backends and this very interesting concept of interoperability, uh, standardized interoperability to really uh, take advantage of the uh, little details uh, of uh, your, your backend. And at the end, you, you can really reach performance close to the native backend in SQL. And obviously, it's open source. Uh, um, it is an open standard, so there is no user uh, locked in. And you, since it's open source, you can benefit from the collaboration with different uh, companies or universities for better code quality. And there is even a tool available to translate from uh, CUDA. And if you're not happy, well, do it the standard way. You can participate uh, to the standard and open source your, your implementation. That's why people, what people do. Um, another interesting part of SQL is that uh, it is a Pure single source C++. Um, uh, so it's a domain specific language on top of C++ uh, to complement uh, ISO, ISO C++, which has not uh, support for uh, accelerators right now. Uh, the interesting fact that it's pure single source C++ is that you can run uh, your code like normal C++ uh, on, on a CPU, and then you will have uh, just uh, kind of emulation of uh, your, your system and you can debug it with uh, any uh, tool such as thread sanitizer to detect uh, race condition and things like that. So it's super cool. And obviously 
article is still going going on and uh, looking at some other uh, uh, markets such as uh, safety critical systems. That's it. So now time to dive into the real tutorial part. Thank you for your attention.